Welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio and Steel Waves Radio. We're on two radio stations as well as YouTube, every podcast catcher, Spotify, <laughs> Apple, Stitcher, uh, just uh, everywhere that you listen to podcasts. And uh, I have, this is going to be a great show. Mm -hmm. uh, that is my co-host. Uh, you know her, you love her. She's back. She's back. Hi. What's up? Back. That's a photo of your co-host. It's a photo, yeah. I'm hiding. You're hiding behind a photo. I'm That's hiding behind a photo today, yes. She's too scared to go on, uh, on, uh, on live. Because of me. Probably. No, I, I don't know. Just don't feel like being looked at today. It's one of those days. Is, Is it, it your... laundry day? Did you get your period today, hon? It's, yeah, and I broke out from my mask because I was sweating in it when I went to the store the other day. And, oh, girl, say yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> and you still look more beautiful than anybody else on this show, I would imagine. Mm -mm. And that's saying something because not, uh, okay. except for me, uh, we've got two very attractive people here. We do. We have, uh, the, the Prince of Darkness is here. Uh, it's been a while since we've had him on, about a year and a half. He's been up to a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of stuff coming up. Very, very happy to have him because I've got quite a lot of questions for him. My friends uh, call me the Prince of Darkness. Stance on the way. <laughs> Sorry, Santa, what'd you say? Darkness? It's called me the Prince of Darkness. No, you're the Prince of Darkness. You know, you know that. Why is it the Prince of Darkness? Prince of Darkness. You, you, say, you call yourself a dork. I had a beautiful occult uh, fetish model email uh -huh. me that I hadn't talked to in about four years. And I said, do you have any uh, questions for Stanton LaVey? She's like, oh, just tell him uh, this beautiful model thinks he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. right, there you go for the Prince of Darkness. Uh, go ahead, uh, yeah, go ahead and inhale. Uh, somebody that's doing that along with you is, you know, the last time you were on was our Christmas show, and you told us all about a holiday show. Talked about Father Frost, talked about all the uh, holiday stuff that you like to do with your children. And yep. afterwards, you invited me to a ritual, which unfortunately I had a show that night, and I couldn't go. I mentioned this to my friend, very funny comedian who's uh, inhaling right now, Mia Mars, uh -huh. and she was so jealous. Oh, and so you have to come on the show with Stanton and talk with him. And we've been wanting to have her back on for so long. How are you, Mia? I'm excited. I'm great. This is going to be probably the highlight of my week. <laughs> oh. Of course, you burned your hand earlier in the week, so I guess it's a little bar. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm a dumb idiot. Don't hand sanitizer is flammable, people. Just remember that, okay? Ow. Is that what you think, really? Funny. It could have been my fucking face because I smoke cigarettes, yo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, be careful. Try not to burn anything during the show. Especially not uh, your pretty face. I know. Yeah. I need it. Yes. Yes. So what's up? Well, so, uh, well, before we get started, let me uh, say uh, real quick. Because we got so many sponsors now that if you're watching this on YouTube, you're listening to this on any of the podcast catchers, go in the description because you will have a free trial to Audible. There's uh, discounts for uh, Hustler Hollywood. There's discounts for Spy Associates. So you can get vibrators. You can buy uh, spy equipment. Uh, there's also information about Doomie's Home Cooking. i just recently finding out that Stanton is, is vegan, I think. Yeah. Yay. So, you ever do, like, do me some cooking? Say what? Do me some cooking in Hollywood? Do I do I do I do I do what? Have you ever been to Doomy's home cooking in Hollywood? Doomies? No, I haven't been to Doomy's. I I feel like a dummy now. Why? What's Doomy's? Doomy's is Amazing. the best vegan food you ever had. Delicious. Really? I'm like uh come and pick you up. Twelve fifty three Vine Street. There's a restaurant in Culver City and one in Canada, in Toronto, Canada. Pulled pork sandwiches, chicken parmesan. How long has it been there? It's been there for four or five years. Oh, that's, 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 that's a genius. That's I'm sorry. The Mexican restaurant with the biggest flautas I ever had. This is one of those like mandala effect moments where I'm living in a parallel universe or something because I thought that I had absolutely every vegan thing conceivable in all of the greater Los Angeles and beyond. But hey, I, I, I'm telling you, do me some cooking. I was going to ask you about the mandala effect. But uh, I also wanted to talk about our new sponsor, and there will be a, a coupon code for 50% off an order for Ray's Energy Drinks. 
And oh. I will tell you, if there's something I know, it's energy drinks. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, if there's something I know, that's about raising things. Yes. So this, this goes both ways. But I, this is not the cheap garbage you're going to get at 7-Eleven. This is stuff you can find in gyms. You find in uh, uh, GNC. There's mm -hmm. zero calories, zero carbs, and zero crash. This is the Baja Lime flavor. Yum. I'm going to try this now. How's it? Damn good. It's this is pasties. So that's it. So now I've sold my soul to the corporate devil. <laughs> uh, let me. Uh, let, I just, this, this is the first question I wanted to ask because I thought about having you. Well, about a month ago, we're on top of all the quarantine, the diseases flying around, the racial unrest, the riots. It was so apocalyptic. It's that's pretty rad. That's what I was going to ask. I, pretty I awesome. I would ask the most evil man I know. <laughs> is there a plan behind this? Is there something you know that I don't? Oh, yeah, man. This is just phase two. We haven't even entered phase three yet. No, I'm just kidding. No, there's no plan. I don't know. This, is, this shit's fucking crazy, dude. You know? I mean, what is you're all your quarantine? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't make a difference for me because I, you know, I don't go out anyway. You know, like everybody comes to me. Okay. I can tell you. When was the last time you had some vitamin D? <laughs> vitamin D, like, like, like that dick? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I go outside all the time. I've got a beautiful yard. Um, you know, I go out and like go run errands. Like I go to Staples to pick up some posters sometimes and like different stuff like that. Oh, but, like, God, yeah, I have shit, to run you know? errands or else I lose my mind. Totally, yeah, just normal shit. And I go on like like little like mini like um, what do they call this? Like mini vacations with my wife, like little three day vacations where we like go like you know like some town here or there in California we've never been to for no real particular reason and just sort of like poke around and like you know and then come home. Just yeah, stuff like, well, at least window shop, you know, whatever's open, you know, we pop into and um, been wearing our masks and doing our due diligence and all that type of stuff. And, um, but, you know, as far as the like racial stuff, I don't really know if I fully like not to not to come off as like a conspiracy freak, not that I'm not one, but I don't know that I really feel fully believe that like you know that uh, that like that it is the way it's being presented to seem when it, relative to like uh the social unrest regarding racism per se as an issue in other words um it's not that i don't think that there are problems that need to be fixed and it's not that i don't think that fucking pigs need to like get their their justice and uh you know i mean they've been killing people uh, murdering people forever, and I'm, you know, I've, I'm a victim of police brutality. I have tons of friends. I, I know people who've been killed by cops. Um, so like, there's definitely some major reform that needs to take place, and um, and I'm totally on the side of uh, of of minorities and people who've been marginalized in society, uh, being, you know, targeted, profiled, and um, and hurt, uh, being treated, you know, uh, violently. But black and, lives matter and Satanist okay. lives matter. Well, well, black lives, well, black, you know, black either way. It's like black, it, it's two, it's just two different shades of black, you know, um, uh, the worst <laughs> one, uh, you know, I have, I have so many it, questions for you. Can you just answer some for me? I can try to, uh, yeah, sure. Let's go. All right. Do you consider yourself like part of the satanic legacy? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, that's un, I kind of inescapable. So, yeah. You were literally like, born into it. Yeah, I was born into it. I, grew up, I mean, whereas like some people are members of different various satanic sects, organizations, groups, and stuff like that, um, I'm not presently an active member like uh like most people today would be of the church of satan that exists today uh whereas i you know spent my formative years in the black house that was the church of satan so the original the difference between the church of satan satanism satanic and i know there is satanism where it's farcical um yeah it's different. like it's jokey which i love like you know uh I like Satanism. I, it can be I, genuine. I it. it can 
be genuine and authentic and still be jokey and farcical. You know, so like, why, why don't you? I might like think it's you more, but like I, it's uh. Well, some people, you know, some people. Uh, is it obviously, in my opinion, he quite you too. Do you consider it a religion, or do you consider it more of a lifestyle? It, it's a it's a religion. It is. It's just it's it's not a um it's not a uh, it's not a mainstream religion. It's um it's kind of a para religion. It runs alongside other religions without um being you know uh, I don't know. It's kind of just sort of goes under the radar. It's, um, but it's it's growing too, and it's becoming more mainstream. It's becoming kind of like pretty rapidly more mainstream, I guess you would say. So well, I was gonna say, I, and I've been I've been watching a lot of stuff about your grandfather, yeah. uh, Anton Lavey, who mm -hmm. founded the Church of Satan, wrote yeah. the Satanic Bible. He he created modern day Satanism. Yeah. He, he created modern day Satanism, and I, I mean, his glory days were in the radical 60s, 66, 67, 68, 69. Yeah, was when he really was. Influential. He was on this night show with Johnny yeah. Carson. Yeah, he performed a black mass on on Carson's Tonight Show on the I think it was the like hundredth episode show or something like that. And it's I mean that's how that's how influential he was in those days. Now those days I don't think we've seen turmoil like we have now since those days. We haven't seen what turmoil and racial tension no. and political unrest and political. <laughs> And now, that, I mean, just differences. No, we're living in a time, interest, curiously, very, uh, I mean, uh, similar in some, uh, you know, in more ways than, in, you know, in a long time now, right now, as uh, during the, you know, the uh, time of uh, uh, civil rights movement and stuff like that. So, like, um, with, like, the parallels between, like, the Watts riots and now and stuff like that. And it's just, like, you know, there's a lot of just stuff that seems like a similar kind of angst going on like social unrest and stuff but um uh as far as satanism uh where, where are we going with this like um yeah well, you know, just explain explain what you how you define the satanism let's go with Sorry. that what are the what? main pillars of satanism what okay. are well um what are the commandments what are the big rules all right so i was thinking about this tonight because i don't really like just going on seeing the same rehashing the same thing over and over again. So I was thinking, okay, I want to say something a little different tonight about Satanism. And so um, the, I'm going to come at it from this way. Uh, so uh, early on, uh, while codifying Satanism, I guess you would say, my grandmother and my grandfather, who are kind of uh, who originated Satanism, uh, the way it's uh, the way it's acknowledged today, and the way it's um, practiced in America and worldwide created um, um, a saying, a catchphrase kind of that was, um, that was known amongst the inner circle as sex, sentiment, and wonder. And that these three things were, um, were vital and necessary uh, to be present in something in order for it to, uh, for it to be uh, satanic. And so, uh, and, what I, I guess the way to separate those out and make them make sense is that um, on um, I'm going to make it as three points. So one point is Satanism is about indulgence. It's about living uh, a life of carnality and living a life that is based uh, in hedonism and sort of like, uh, um, I guess it would be kind of like what you, what a lot of people would remember the summer of love of the 60s to be kind of like but but a little less grungy and hippie ish and a little bit more like um like bdsm and kink based and in fact a lot of like what people today regard as like the bdsm type nightlife scene and fetish stuff that's based in like uh you know sex fetishes and things like that um grew in terms of mainstream popularity out from or from from out of Satanism in the 1960s. So my grandfather was a major proponent and pop and popularizer of things like um, uh, body modification um, and, uh, and uh, modern primitivism and a lot of different types of subcultures that are now uh, border bordering on and actually have entered the mainstream like where, where 
uh, you know, TV shows like Sons of Anarchy, and there's, and, but that's just one to name of uh, so many. There's all kinds of examples of, uh, uh, you know, like Anton was featured in American Horror Story. I think I mentioned that in my last mm -hmm. visit on, I don't know if that yeah, happened. I saw, that. I saw that. Did you Did you like that portrayal? Did you? Or, Any portrayal of Anton in mainstream Hollywood that is done, uh, that's done, you know, uh, with at least like some effort involved, I think is cool. It doesn't really matter if it's like. They could have cast you, Abby. What, what, what were they thinking? Uh, like the Church of Satan seemed a little bit uptight about it. They like they they were like, oh, Anton Levy would never agree to this, and you know his blah 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 about the you know, he would never condone human sacrifice. But it's camp and it's horror. It's called American Horror Story. We all we all know that it's not meant to be taken literally. So mm -hmm. yeah. So Anton was not for human sacrifice. No, absolutely not. Okay, so the sex and sentiment and wonder. Okay, so sex, we got that covered. It, it very well, 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 much before, we, before I move on from sex, okay. you know me, I'm all about it. Yeah. Uh, um, when you, when you say indulge. Anton was a sex symbol, too. And he was actually, you, Satanism and the Church of Satan and Anton as the symbol for the movement was used as a, uh, as a mean, as, as a, really to sell magazines and to as a um, as a symbol for uh for for the counterculture he was and kind that's of something that he's passed on to you because you're a sex symbol too well oh, well thank you mark uh yeah i mean i guess too there's, you are there's... devilishly handsome mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that's part of my job uh -huh. i just wanted to clarify you say be hedonistic but does that extend to incest molestation uh rape no, absolutely not. Forcing your will on anyone um, who either doesn't, who isn't asking for it, hasn't consented to it, or doesn't deserve it by some means uh, that is according to natural law. In other words, the law of the jungle are strictly forbidden in Satan. Because, because that, those are hedonistic too. Well, they're hedonistic, but that doesn't make them right. Right. And, not, uh, all, not all hedonistic act actions or activities are condoned or considered uh, Like right. they didn't deserve it. There is, they didn't deserve it, they didn't consent. Satanism is not a religion that, of, of an it's not a religion of anarchism, and it, it, there is a wrong and a right. Right. No, I, I wanted to clarify that, because I yeah. know that Satanism tolerated homosexuals and Absolutely. homosexuals yeah. and everything else. Yeah, it, way before it, it mainstream. Doesn't it doesn't tolerate. It encourages. Uh, in fact, I mean, uh, and when I say it encourages, it doesn't encourage specifically homosexuality. What it encourages is it encourages individuality, and it encourages freedom of individual expression of uh, of whatever your get down is. It doesn't matter whether, like, I mean, if like if your thing is you know your sexuality or your sexual. Uh, preference idea identity however you know you define yourself sexually and that's like really your like primary uh, you know, personality identifier then that's going to be as Satanist what you know stands out front and center so but that doesn't mean that that's like um, some sort of like like um, that it's like mandatory or something like that like I mean there are plenty of Satanists who are very uh, you know um, um, kind of meek and uh, unassuming and not very sexually aggressive types and uh, there's every type of Satanist you know I, that, I think that's one of the great uh, beauties of Satanism is that you will and you you will you're guaranteed to come across and cross paths with literally every conceivable personality type other than closed-minded ones which are really it's like if, if, if there were ever one type of personality I want to like automatically avoid it would be closed minded personalities. And so uh, to have that as a filter in life is, uh, is a pretty great thing, I think. Okay, so so we got the sex. Yeah, we got the sex. Uh, the sentiment, uh, the sentiment would be uh, okay, so um, now, now in life, right? Okay, so when you're at home alone, Mark, you know, like you're going to listen to music and you're going to um, adorn the walls of your apartment with art maybe, or with, and you're going to like have clothing that you either like don't get rid of because of 
uh, sentimental value and attachment that you have to it and because it reminds you of a particular time in your life or a, a way of life living in lifestyle that that um, that like when you when you listen to that music when you put on that shirt when you look at your environment and you remember back to a time when you were like at your most like comedic and gothic okay mm -hmm. and uh, and um you uh and that knows me you, so well and you have these things around you as reminders and as as um as sort of like uh as as um scenery uh in your life um it it you can you can use you can use them magically in a way. And I don't know this, you know, maybe some of your watchers, listeners, however, will, will be able to vibe on this, but like if you listen to certain music or watch a certain movie or however, or maybe like um, get together with a certain group of friends that you had a great, you know, really incredible, memorable experience with or something, there's this sensation that you actually feel in internally that goes beyond it transcends just um the the standard five senses and it it's actually this other worldly um and it's also a connective otherworldly sort of um um, um energy it's uh... it's, a, uh, it's an energy exactly that is being transmitted between uh between the individual and other things uh, well, we can get into that maybe later uh, on or in a moment. But um, but basically, sentiment uh, when applied magically in this way in life, and when you use things that are so meaningful to you that they generate this type of energy, and then when you take that energy and you focus it on something, um, uh, whatever it may be, and with certain. Um, with certain techniques applied, uh, the results, uh, in other words, um, the magical results in terms of what a person can accomplish or attain out of or from using this type of energy ritualistically is pretty remarkable. Well, speaking of that, and I, I want to get Hannah in here because after uh, a couple of years ago when you were on the show for the first time, you had a showing of the movie Satanas. Yeah. And I know Hannah went. Yeah. And I know after she was there, she's. She's like, oh my God, it was a life-changing experience. That's the type of sentiment that I'm talking about. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Yeah. How to describe this? Why was this a life-changing experience? It was just like something I've never experienced before. It was so artistically done, enlightening. Um, just, you can't really describe it when you're there. I mean, I know you have I had a couple of friends with me. At the time, but besides yeah, I that. Couple, I had a couple of friends with me that were there as well, and they were just in awe, so. So cool. you felt the energy, you felt the satanic. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. It was very uh, friendly and inviting and comfortable, safe. But it created a sentimental experience that now you have, that you associate with and will forever probably, where when Always. you went to see Satanus, uh, you know, if you see Satanus with friends or if, you know, if, should the mm -hmm. occasion, you know, rise to watch it or even just talking about it even like right now, it will bring about that, like you'll you will catch a feeling of that same energy of of sentiment, and uh, so. Well, I also still have the dress from what you're saying. Like you hold on to clothing, I still have yeah. the dress I wore to the premiere, and yeah. I keep it because of that. That's pretty cool. Yes, yes, and so mm -hmm. like you could you you could absolutely and you could very effectively use that dress ritualistically or ceremonially. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, with uh, with you know tying that sentiment into the magic. Uh, using for satan for use uh, for satanic magic, and mm -hmm. so uh, the third um, wonder uh, um, is uh, is is really what uh, uh, the uh, is where is, is what is being used theatrically to um, to attract uh, and to dazzle or uh, or open the minds or um, uh, titillate. However, uh, the uh, so uh, sex, sentiment, and wonder. How, you know, how uh, I'm using these to describe Satanism. All right now. So uh, sex, sentiment, and wonder. Uh, in in terms of uh, of this combination or this uh, this recipe uh, equation for Satanism, is um, is cr is creating 
a, um, a you know a situation and a scene and an environment and a play uh, out of life and you uh, and, and and turning uh, people in your life and around you other Satanists uh, into players in something that is um, um, intended to more or less entertain uh, an audience of demons, if you will. Uh, I know that that might sound crazy, but uh, we live on a stage. This world is a stage and humans are players on a stage that are entertaining. Um, or we, are, we are here really to interact and entertain in this way um, a cast of, uh, of forces and energies that, um, that we're able to call on and, uh, and work with and, um, and gain as fans in some, uh, in some ways, or depending on how uh, popular you might become. Um, and uh, this is the difference between, the, uh, this is the difference between um, um, uh, atheistic Satanism and, uh, and um, uh, uh, theosophical, or a the, a theological uh, Satanism, sorry. Oh, so, that's what I was uh, yeah. yeah, there seems to we be have, three types. There seems to be the cool art school kid that is like atheistic, and then there seems to be the like teenage kid that actually believes in the devil. Well, there are, uh, the, and there's but people there's, who do the use of magic, at least in employing magic, um, for, uh, um, uh, you know, to to affect a change and uh, and to get something more out of uh, life and um, and a religious experience with Satan or with Satanism. Um, and there's yeah, and then there's these there's kind of dress up types that are I think are a little bit um, nervous or apprehensive to approach um, approach it uh, as witchcraft and. Um, and so I think that that's where a lot of confusion um, comes into. Well, which would you classify yourself as? Sorry, what? Which would you classify yourself as? Uh, um, well, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not an atheist. Uh, um, so you do uh, believe in you believe in God. You believe in heaven and hell. I don't believe in God in a in the. I don't believe in God in the. You believe uh, in energy? It seems like you believe in energy. And well, like that that's is... Kind of like, that's kind of putting it vaguely too, though. And that's not... And that doesn't really nail it down either. Um, it's not like... Uh, that's, that, that sounds hokey. And, it, and, it, and that would... And to say it's just energy is, is kind of being hokey. Um, uh, I actually, you know, I know without a doubt that there are beings that exist uh, that are that are not necessarily perceivable uh, to uh, to us and other animals at least um, using our primary senses but that doesn't at all mean that they're not there and and, it, uh, and I think that it's just um, I mean, for me, it's kind of like really strange, the idea or the thought. You have to understand. Uh, uh, you have to understand where I'm coming from, is from a place where it doesn't make sense at all to look at things as though, uh, uh, you know, monotheistically, and as though Jesus is something or someone who actually existed, and all of this type of stuff. This is all. I hate like, Jesus. I hate what? Jesus. I hate Jesus so yeah, much. Well, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of really I, I, desirable things about Jesus. And, I, and sorry, he, but, he was just the Charlie Manson of, look, more people have died in the name of Jesus than in the name of Charlie Manson. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> well, well, funny you should mention Charlie Manson because Charlie Manson in his autobiography wrote about Stanton LaVey. Now, how does he, how did he know you? I mean, how did that, Correspondence started because I also read. I've been reading your articles in in Ozzy, the uh, the website, which is very interesting. You yeah. talked about Susan Atkins visiting the Black House. 
But yeah. you were born you were born 10, 12 years later. How does not Charles quite, Manson in a prison quite cell? That long. I was born nine years later, yeah. Yeah. How does Charles Manson in a prison cell find out about you and be so taken with you? He's Manson. What do you expect? It. Crazy. Well, well, I think that um, I think that we had some weird similar stuff going on in terms of like how he was experiencing Hollywood back in the late sixties to how I was experiencing Hollywood in the like in the late 2000 whatever uh, or in whatever around 2008 and nine so right around the same time 50 years later would have been 50 or 40 wait is that 40, 40 or 50 years 40 40 okay so right around 40 years later i was living out um um a hollywood lifestyle that was very much like charlie manson's in nine, in the late 60s and we and we also had a lot of like uh, connections. We knew a lot of the same people while he was in prison and I knew people, I mean, we worked with different people in the literary world and in uh, just in the counterculture scene as artists and different people. We ran with a lot of the same people. Um, if Charlie was not in jail, like if he wasn't living his life in prison, we would have absolutely been friends. Um, we were, we maintained kind of like a weird, vague friendship through the media. We didn't write each other letters. Um, we talked to each other through people and through stories and through articles, which is kind of strange. Um, and yeah, he, uh, he wanted my story. I guess, I guess he thought that I probably had some insight from the fact that when I was a kid, uh, research was being done for Charles Manson Superstar, the documentary that my stepdad, Nicholas Schreck, directed. And um, there was some there was some stuff there that I learned about, about like Charlie Manson, Charlie's uh, background um, with the CIA and that he, there's, you know, pretty, there's like, there's pretty like solid evidence to support the, the not idea, but fact that Charlie was a CIA officer. I was going to segue into your article for Ozzy okay. Magazine when you were yeah. talking about growing up in the Black House. So, I mean, to end up, the black house? like a religion of heathens, basically. You know, we, we believe in like common sense, uh, you know, treating people with, uh, you know, basic decency and not, and also taking responsibility for your actions, having fun, living life to the fullest, experimenting and indulging in um, the black arts, if you will, of magic and occultism. And, uh, and so there's that. And then uh, on to what, which article were we talking about? Uh, there was an article where you talked about all the uh, serial killers oh. that, 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 went, that went to the black house. That see, Mia oh, almost oh, caught oh, me. Oh, I knew oh, this oh, was oh, 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 okay. Tell me everything you know about the son of Sam. I don't have anything on the Son of Sam, but did, wait, Mark, did that article come out since the last time I was on your show? Yes, it did. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so like... Well, Susan Atkins, first of all. Yours, right? I liked it. I liked, I, I, I've been reading all the articles. They're, they're terrific. Okay. Uh, the, no, we, we got to go West Coast on this. Because the Black House, which is, was Anton LaVey's house, house... for sameness. Well, was Anton LaVey's house in San Francisco... Was painted all black, and oddly enough, uh, before he even wrote the Satanic Bible, it was notorious because Anton Lavey had a lion, a full-grown lion. Yeah. So he was like the tiger, the original Tiger King. Big cats around as pets. Yeah. If you're gonna get a tiger, just have a kid. Just yeah. He, well, he had a lion. He had, a, he had an African lion, and I mean, well, it was a lion cub at first, uh, but you know, uh, lion cubs become. Big lines. Yeah. So he yeah. was the original Tiger King, and he I, was on he was on a children's show that's now on Amazon Prime. Yeah, I watched that. Yes, called uh, called Brother Buzz. It was the Brother Buzz children's show, and it was a local Bay Area San Francisco children's show. It was in 1965. They did a they did a kind of a Count Dracula meets the Adams Family esque like uh, like. Um, look at my family um at the time my mother was my mother Zena was like all of you know one or two uh years old and they had a lion cub uh named togar 
the lion and um, years later, and it's depicted in, in the film Satanus, they ended up having to give the lion up and the lion ended up retiring here in Southern California at Tippy Hedren Wildlife Reserve. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot. She rescued the and shit. Yes, yeah. So, uh, so Togar, my grandfather's lion, sired, sired generation after generation of, of movie lions for uh, Shambhala here in Southern California. Yeah, as a, on a side note, um, and then, uh, um, but yes, uh, there was something I was going to mention though that you you were you just mentioned something before. The oh, brother. So you grew up in San Francisco, and I oh, was okay. asking about serial killers. Tell me everything. Okay. Well, it was okay, a so dark so. house. It was a black house. And, um, and I'm guessing it was it on was, the H Street, mean, right? If I recall correctly. I mean, yeah, it was on California Street in the Richmond District in San Francisco. You're thinking of, there's another house that's notorious in San Francisco. Not that there aren't many notorious houses, but one in particular is called the Westerfield House, which was also known as the Old Russian Embassy. And um, this is where Bobby Beausoleil, Kenneth Anger, Charlie Manson, and right, Susan I Pack, of them. and my grandfather all met. And, wow. Uh, yeah. And, and it's where... Charlie Mans, it's where Bobby Beausoleil and Susan Atkins ended up becoming members of the Manson family. And then, and then who, and then leaving to LA with Charlie and then becoming murderers in the Manson family. Yeah. But Susan Atkins posed nude in your father's house. This is correct. Yes. Uh, on several occasions, in fact. And um, I mean, I've got like one on California uh, street, you said, yeah. right? Yeah. And then yeah. The one, uh, and then the one where everybody met. Yeah, that's the, that was the, that was the old there was the old Russian embassy that was in like the, the uh, where you mentioned, and then uh, on Hate near Hate Street, and then my uh, and the then one, Ant that one's on California. Okay, I'm thinking see where I grew yeah. up. The Black House, the famous Black House that was set back from the street, where uh, you know where there were many never ending, I mean, bajillions of pages of Google photos of my family, you know, in front of and different people at the Black House. Um, Marilyn Manson and Tracy Lords went and met my grandfather at, at his house, at our house. Um, but in particular, the story that Mark's referring to is this story that I wrote that basically highlighting just a few of the more um, uh, celebrated murderers that uh, passed uh, by or through the doors of the Black House. But uh, um, the, Susan Atkins, of course, was, you know, had a connection to, to the family and, uh, as a publicity model. So it wasn't really a member of the Church of Satan. She was actually just like, like, like kind of like runaway hippie chick on the street that happened to be like willing to do basically anything. So she would take these odd jobs, you know, doing whatever, and she would, she was willing to pose nude which a lot of people weren't and uh and um in the in the in the accent and uh and words of the photographer who took the photos and who recruited susan atkins among other witches uh oof she's got good the pussy <laughs> so uh yeah he was some like swedish guy i guess and uh, he thought she had a nice looking pussy and she, and she was willing to get naked. And um, so she, uh, she got herself some gigs uh, posing with Khan. Um, but she also uh, performed uh, in a, um, in a, in like a strip tease performance art thing that Anton directed called the, um, called the, uh, the Topless Witches Review at the Mitchell Brothers Theater. And so he would direct Susan Atkins as um, as the victim of Dracula, and he would like pick her up and bite her, and you know carry her off. And there was one where some other girl would be like tied up, and the and a werewolf or a wolfman would run out on stage and sort of ravish her, and like pick her up and take her and tear, you know, run off stage with her. Um, and so yeah, and then uh, other killers though, like that people didn't know about or. Like for instance, the Zodiac Killer had ties to my to my family, or at least to the Church of Satan. Tell me and, more. Uh, I love the Zodiac. I think we're very close to catching it if we're willing to put in some DNA bullshit, like what he did with the Golden State Killer. 
I think we could totally figure out who Zodiac is because he licked an envelope, the dumb fuck. Yeah, yeah. But it would just be a matter of having something to compare it to is the thing. That, they found it through some family tree bullshit. Yeah. For the Golden State Killer. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, the, the Golden State Killer, yeah. But, uh, but he's more recent, though, isn't he? Like his, his, his more, his like, his latest, his last crimes. He did. He stopped oh. doing his crimes because he realized, uh, he was a cop, so he realized, oh, I should fucking stop this shit. Uh, but he was the original Night Stalker, I think, in the 1970s, you know, the OG one. Not, really? uh, not Richard Ramirez, who I would love. Well, we're going to talk about in a second. But yeah. R Richard, Richard Ramirez came by the Black House. He made like uh, he made a pilgrimage to the Black House. He was obsessed with Anton uh, and, and obsessed with the family um, and all of it. And uh, and he actually presented kind of an interesting um, dilemma or uh, problem, uh, if you will, of Satanism as to what, you know, what, where, what is, what isn't Satanic? In other words, uh, it's like, um, yes, we're not supposed to, you're not supposed to kill anyone. Uh, Satanism is against killing or taking anything against its life. Um, but uh, on the flip side, uh, if a person is, uh, is, determined to do something and willing to face whatever consequences um, are coming their way. Uh, and then they face those consequences and do so. And, and, and they're not, you know, big whiners about it. Uh, I can't really, you can't really say that, that they are not. There was no permission from the victims of, there was no permission from the victims of, uh, the Night Stalker, although he did think that if the doors were open, he couldn't, that was permission. Yeah, yeah, he was crazy. So, in his fucked up mind, he was wrong, but I get behind his thinking now. I get why he thought <laughs> that, you know? Um, it it's not right, <laughs> it's not right, but like, I see the timeline, dude. Yeah, he was crazy. I'm unraveling the insanity. It was pretty scary. I mean, uh, the thing is, is uh, as a kid, it, there were always strange, you know, there was always the chance of somebody really crazy like uh, Richard Ramirez um, or, um, you know, would be kidnappers, um, people randomly shooting at the house, even crazy Christians would um, shoot at our house and plot on. Was it hard to have friends over? Was it, was it what? Was it hard, it hard to? to have friends over, like sleepovers? Uh, it didn't happen very often. You didn't have sleepovers at the Black House? I don't recall ever a time inviting a Not friend. Not parties, to... anything like that? No, no. <laughs> uh, but... So Stanton, would you say that like veganism and Satanism go hand in hand because you don't want to take a life against its will? Good question. Excuse me? Would you say Satanism and veganism, they go hand in hand because you don't want to take a life against its will? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's, that, that makes it work philosophically, at least for me, on a mm -hmm. sort of simple, on a simplified level. But mm -hmm. other reasons that I have personally for being vegan um, that, 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 are not, um, that are not health reasons per se. In other mm -hmm. words, like, I'm not some kind of like health freak. It's not mm -hmm. about that. Um, uh, but I definitely do not believe that any animal should be killed um, unnecessarily when there are so many um, options and when we mm -hmm. live in a world of such incredible variety and abundance that there is absolutely no conceivable reason why any animal should ever be hurt or caged mm -hmm. or killed. For it food. And here's where I differ from uh, well, from other types of vegans, where other types of vegans often are more very pacifistic types that say, oh, well, you know, you can't fault these people. These people, they, they, they don't know any better. All we can do is we can try to educate them. And it's like, you know, no, for me uh, personally, I would take more of an aggressive and more um, extreme approach to this if given license and the opportunity to. I feel mm -hmm. that it should be stopped immediately. All production and our quote unquote production of the uh, wholesale slaughter of animals uh, mm -hmm. need to cease immediately and, com and completely and entirely and permanently. And mm -hmm. I feel that people should have to either pay such an uh, just 
un inconceivably huge um, um, luxury tax on uh, the on 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 something like eating animal flesh that it should become um, just financially undesirable. Uh, Agreed. Like, on on, a, on a, just to start with, and then once you do once you get that in place, then you know with a few other measures taken. It really shouldn't be that difficult to recondition a people uh, people after a generation or two of uh, of you know rethinking and just providing them with options that make more sense. Uh, people need to uh, um, stop just um, thinking that whatever it is, is right because they've been doing it so long. That's the number one uh, most dangerous. Um, um, way to go about making a decision in life of what you should or shouldn't be doing, uh, what you what makes what's uh, rational or logical, um, reasonable, sensible, um, fair, um, um, healthy, um, kind, um, uh, loving. Um, Any of decisions. The type of thing and and, and you, you two, you two can you two are gonna. Just obliterate the meat market altogether, and I, I applaud. Yeah, we are. <laughs> but uh, in the name of Satan. But why Stanton? And I, based on bullshit that you that that has just that you've been doing. Did you grow up in a vegan house? Was the black house vegan or? Absolutely no way, no way, no, no, no. But no, my, I, I was going to say well, my, my, my grandfather. My grandfather was a meat and potatoes man from Chicago. Uh, he, uh, he, he, you know, would, uh, when he went out, if it wasn't, you know, some sort of red meat and some sort of wine sauce with potatoes, you know, and, uh, but what, and, and that's about it, you know, um, that and, uh, and alcohol and chocolate, you know, those were the types of things that Anton lived on. Um, and, and sex. Huh? And sex. Sex, yeah, uh, but there again, uh, Anton was a sex. Okay, sex symbols aren't always as like, aren't always like you know, just like hard pounding fucking twenty four seven as you might imagine. Being, you know what I mean? Like, well, you are. Well, you have to actually finesse it. There's a lot of work involved in being a sex symbol that makes it so that you don't sometimes have as much time to just fuck off as you'd like to have. Uh, you would know better than I would. I was going to say, as far as the decision, now, when Anton passed away in, in the late 90s, there's a big power struggle for the Church of Satan. And all this time, you have you ever tried to assume the mantle? No. Uh, I'm, I'm working on this thing right now called the Satanic Order. And uh, it's uh, a continuation of a project that I've been working on for some time now with um, uh, the re recently deceased Lieutenant, uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino, um, and along with other um, uh, um, friends and uh, associates, Boyd Rice and uh, a number of other people that uh, that is now coming together and uh, finally coalescing and we're um, going to be opening uh, the doors uh, to our first chapter of the Ordo Satanus is what we're calling it. Um, and, uh, and, um, taking memberships. So. Okay. How come you didn't, uh, you haven't done this before or have you tried before? Uh, yeah. Timing, um, inspiration, um, it's just, it's what feels right when and what makes sense. I've got, there's people involved. It's not just me. It's there's factors. Are you paint it black? Sorry. Are you going what? to paint it black? Oh uh, well, yeah. At least one. At least one side of it. Well, we've got uh, we've got the House of Wills in Cleveland, and uh, and uh, Eric Freeman's been uh, gracious enough to to offer the house, which is a citywide uh, or a city block sized mansion in the middle of Cleveland, Ohio. It's really incredible. It's uh, one of the most haunted um, buildings in the United States, the House of Wills. If you look it up, uh, we're making it uh, our first chapter at least, and uh, it's uh, operating headquarters out of there for now. So, 
And I always, I always have to ask you silly questions. The last time I asked you if uh, Taylor Swift was a clone of your mother, and I, I, I just read that somewhere, and then I found some footage of your mother, and I know you guys are estranged. I don't want, I don't want to get too deeply into that, but I did see a picture of your mother when she was young, and she does beautiful. She looks a lot like Taylor Swift. Yeah, I guess I can see the resemblance, man. You know, and they 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 both have that like kind of mousy, you know, like uh, I don't know, they're. Yeah, I guess the hair is um, similar. The uh, just and the type of like popular chick in high school that you know that would have never spoken to me or you, Mark. All right. Well, I, I know that. I, I I can tell you that already. Me and you <laughs> hanging out like 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 you know jerking off thinking about them, you know. But they would have never talked to us. No, I wouldn't. No, it's, they see that those weren't the ones I jerk off to. The, I jerked off to the to the weird goth uh, girls that were yeah, just dating, and they had nothing to do with me either. Right. So. Zena was a weird goth chick. Well, not goth. No, you liked yeah. him really. Uh, you liked him in poet shirts and and like and like velvet and shit. No, ah, ah, oh, velvet and shit. Because <laughs> Zena, Zena, was, Zena was, How Zena much was, black velvet was on the my wall mother wore, my house. mother wore like spandex mini skirts when I was a little kid, and all my friends would jerk off thing and talk tell stories about jerking their masturbation span, fantasies about my mother. She was, she was a belf, I, I suppose. But she was she was yeah, she was a male, but she was but we, you know she had you when she was fourteen. She was a, a young woman. She yeah she was a, yeah, she was a young woman. She was, she was a slutty young woman. Okay. But she but she, I mean her her baptism when she was three was uh, a big deal. It was a big deal actually, yeah. and um, and it and it was one of the three. It was one of the three first and. Uh, most important rituals that Anton performed publicly uh, that were that formulated Satanism into the public zeitgeist. So, right. I have so many more questions about growing up in the Black House. Go right ahead. All right. Yeah, I, I didn't grow up in it. I spent my formative years in it. I was there until I was five. So uh, and then I went and then I was back there for, for like a year on and off. And then I just have the- other questions about you growing up and. I've had a pretty well, the Antichrist. Well, not so much the Antichrist thingy. You know, it's like uh, I'm a Jew, so I think anything that isn't the one God is yeah, it's kind of stupid. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, well, well don't, don't get me in Nick Cannon it, kind of trouble on the show, okay? But no, we believe in energy. We yeah. definitely like there are some things like you know, don't hurt others unless you're provoked. Don't do. I I, I like it. Um, but I'm wondering what it's like to grow up with your being under the eye of like the royal family is what I'm really well, curious about. Okay. So it, for me, and, and this okay. question, is, uh, I'll try to answer it this way. Um, growing up in the 1980s, which is when it was when I was a little kid in the Church of Satan, was very different than it would be if I was a little kid right now and if all of that was playing out today instead of back then um you know and how the and how the world um how the world is how people are how my family would be perceived today versus the way they were and uh the type of the type of struggles that we experienced as a business and as a philosophy that was gaining some traction to an extent, but that was also under a lot of fire and a lot of a lot of scrutiny from daytime t- talk shows and and pop psychology and and evangelical Christians and all this type of stuff. There were all these like really there's a lot of like big money assholes, if you will, that were really out to um, to put a damper on things for say for the cool say new satanic people and uh and it really had a profoundly negative effect on my family directly and so it's not that i granted you know satanism as a movement has pulled through we've made it through and we are uh we're stronger than ever the movement's moving i mean we're like things are growing and the 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 attention and how we're received and how um, how accepted it is um, in, th- via the mainstream media in Hollywood um, and things like 
uh, you know, from like, um, you know, I was making some uh, like references Asian earlier, but like Buffy always have some sacrifice with sameness and they're always Asian. sacrificing a goat in the eighties. And there was mass media panic over this. Yeah. And the FBI it, finally had to like, I mean, when you and be like, Dude, this shit don't happen. When you consider that back in the 1980s, right, that there were that like, there were only an, a, a handful of bands of heavy metal bands that were considered even like kind of like satanic and that were rumored to be um, involved with or found at the site of like ritual uh, child sacrifices and different animal sacrifices and things like that compared to the fact that heavy metal and black metal and death metal and satanic metal, every type of uh, like sub genre metal that exists that, that is all combined heavy metal right and how satanic it is overtly and when you look at it as a as as a genre just a, as an umbrella genre heavy metal and how much of what exists under that umbrella is basically painted in pentagrams is mind-boggling so you know we're we're living in a completely different like mindset today than we were 25 and 50 years ago and so it's um you know i grew up i was when i was in school as a kid i was the one and only kid that was wearing all black that wasn't goth and that wasn't and that wasn't some sort of like a east side cholo or something and uh because like that would be the only other instance of, of a kid wearing all black is if they were like becoming a gang member and some of my friends in elementary school in Hollywood and in LA when I, cause I spent, um, I spent time, half time between LA and San Francisco when growing up. Um, and, uh, but I finished elementary and went to junior high in Hollywood. And um, I mean, I was the one and only satanic. I was the one and only witch kid. There was no other kid that was like that. But of course, even today it's, it's, it's unusual and there aren't a lot of kids in schools that you point out and go, oh, there goes the Satanists. But they do exist now where they didn't before. And it's actually becoming, you know, it's a thing now. Um, I remember. There's during, lots of Wiccan kids around. I, I grew up with yeah. Wiccan kids. Well, I mean, I remember in 2005 to between 2005 and seven. I was pretty close friends with Hank Williams the third. Hank Williams, the country legend, his grandson. And um and whenever I would talk to him or see him, he would go, he would tell me, Oh man, there were, you know, there were way more kids in black at this show than there were at the last. And he was talking about kids in, like 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 satanic kids, basically. And uh and that his his audiences were 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 morphing from country audiences into Satanists and heavy metal audiences. And so uh, the audience kind of dictated his art, actually, which is kind of was weird. That, was that your influence? Because people, people found out about him through you? Uh, well, they found out that he was, they found out by whatever means that he and I were tight and that his, and that some of his music was being influenced by his association to me with me. Uh, yeah, I just uh, let somebody know that Matt Skiba from Lake 182 was uh, a Satanist. Yeah. That was a good friend. Go, I don't know I, still I, is. I've known Matt forever. Yeah. yeah. But let me ask you a few st silly questions now. I want to uh, ask one too. No, no, we're, you know, we're coming back to you. And, and it's, it's almost, it, it, we're, we're almost done, but I got I to gotta ask some, some dumb questions. Like, uh, just uh, something, some stuff I found on the internet now. Um, was Juice World's death a satanic act price? Was who's death? Juice World? Juice World, the rapper. Juice World. I don't know Juice World. Okay, well maybe not then. Um, uh, Beyonce and Jay Z, they're they've got to be Satanists, right? Uh, they're always doing the Illuminati stuff. Uh yeah uh, yeah I, I, I don't, you know Mark that's one of those things. Uh, I guess by now, sure they must be satanic. In some, some way, I mean, yeah, they're Satanists. Fuck yeah. Lady Gaga Satanist too? Sorry, what? Lady Gaga? Lady Gaga. She is, uh, uh, swear you love Lucifer. Swear you love Lucifer, right? Swear you love Lucifer. I swear to Lucifer. I swear to Lucifer. I swear to Lucifer. Yeah, Lady Gaga is a Satanist. Sure. Okay. All right. 
And uh, I, I was reading today that the bubonic We're plague attack, that, uh, that uh, in Ohio they found a squirrel with bubonic plague. Uh, is is the apocalypse here? Is it is it is it at hand? Fuck no. No. Yeah. Okay. No. So this virus is going to blow over. Yeah, man. Okay. This shit happens all the time. This is not that big of a deal. They're just... going to like have to wear masks for the rest of our lives. Fuck no. Come on. Uh, two, unless, unless years, two, two, half years, tops. Two, two, two years, maybe tops. Okay. Yeah, that sucks. And by that time, your church will be well established. Full swing, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's gotta be, uh, it's, but it, seriously, it's got to be your whole life has had to be pressure filled to live up to um, and your, your grandfather. What if your favorite color isn't black? What if it's like purple and you just want to wear purple? I all the love time? purple. Are you kidding? That's one of my favorite colors. So, What's your yeah, second favorite problem. color? Yeah, what? What are your favorite colors? You can't say black. What are my favorite? Purple would be actually my favorite color. It's, that's the magic color. So, yeah. It's the color of royalty. <laughs> so what's going on, Hannah? I'm here. Will you have questions, Hannah? Huh? Say something. Any Say other something. questions, Hannah? Any other questions? Um... Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. I got something to tell you guys. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be playing Satan in a movie coming up. No, I was, gonna, I was gonna get to that. Before I get to that, I, okay. I, I always have to talk a little dolomite. Say what? I have what? to talk a little dolomite on every show. Let's talk a little dolomite. You and Dolomite, uh, Eddie Murphy did the, did the movie. I thought it was great. Um, but you inferred in an article that Dolomite was bisexual? That Rudy Ray Moore was bisexual? I didn't say he was bisexual. I said he was a fag. Yeah! Dolomite was a fag? Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? Well, it's, I that's, mean, that's the Disco Godfather. What are you talking about? Well, I I just, yeah, it's one of those things. You, it's something you know, you know? It's you know you it. You have sex with Dolomite. You know? I don't know, you know? <laughs> yeah, we'll be back then when he's alive. You know, you know Coke is diet when you're drinking it, you know what I mean? No, I know you did Coke with him, but did you? No, I didn't mean like that. Okay, but go. Yeah, <laughs> that too. All right. I did not Good do time. Coke. No, I didn't do No, I did not do Coke. Coke with Dolomite. I wish that I could say that I did Coke with Dolomite, but I know I did. I did Coke with Dolomite on the phone doing Coke with me. Just zoomed like, you just zoomed cocaine. We, 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 we long distance did, we did Coke together. It was um, social yeah. distancing cocaine. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah. It was a long distance telephone line. Now, what, what celebrity now? Is a Satanist that we wouldn't necessarily think. Who? Wait, what? Who is a Satanist? What is a Satanist that we would have no idea about? Um, let's see. That I'm at liberty to say. Okay. Uh, uh -oh. did, you know, you know who Mark Almond is? Yes, mm -hmm. Marcel. Yeah. Mark Almond is a Satanist. Yeah, the sex dwarf, tainted love. You knew that though. Yeah. I did okay. know that. All right. Um. Um. Who's Satanist? That, okay, do you know who Jacques Vallée is? It sounds familiar. Who is Jacques Vallée? Yeah, Jacques Vallée is one of the world's most famous, if not the world's fam mo uh, most famous uh, ufologist. He's also one of the one of the key inventors of the original internet called ARPANET. Uh, his name's Jacques Jacques Vallée. And uh, he was uh, an early uh, Church of Satan member, close friend of the LeVay family, Satanist. Mm. Yeah, look the guy up fast. I definitely, I definitely will. I now, will, yeah. Hannah, Mia, you guys have one last question, and then I got to talk to Stan about all he's doing now, which is he's got some exciting stuff coming up. I'm good, Mia. Can, can I leave to pee? Yeah, go uh, pee. All right. Should I take it with you? Take it no. with you. Take it with you. <laughs> We oh, can't see it. Just anyway, put so it on mute. Satan, you can pee. Go ahead. I did that. You just put it on mute. They might you like it. I'll be really, really quiet while you do it. <laughs> Embrace the darkness. <laughs> no, but you, you, you're playing, you're playing, you're playing Satan in a movie, which I can't believe that hasn't. Nobody's it's asked. Happened already. Yeah. Not much stretch, right? Tell us about the movie. 
Uh, it's called Death Rising. And it is about, oh, I'm not supposed to say too much about, about what it's about, but it's, uh, but I guess I can say a little. It's about, um, it's about a coven of, uh, of witches um, in New Orleans that are, uh, that are dealing with um, um, a magical working where they are uh, trying to conjure Satan and do, and I play Satan in this film so it's pretty crazy it's like a crazy like 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 cgi and 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 live special effects uh horror movie uh supernatural cool. yeah, are you gonna have like a special or, screening uh, for that kind of getting decided i'm gonna have crazy huge baphomet horns and i'm gonna have like crazy huge wings but i'm not gonna give there's other stuff too i'm not gonna give it all up but there's like there and there's uh, but there's other features too that but it's going to be intense really intense a lot of makeup was the um filming delayed because of the covid no they've been uh they've been doing all principal filming um uh over the past couple of months and mm -hmm. uh, and they're i'm i'm like in just some of the last scenes that they're filming in in um like in uh, about a week and a half so cool well when it comes out i want to see it yeah or something mark and i would love to go yeah i'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know when i'm in town and we'll see if Please. there's anything and, and you were filming a documentary last time you were on Ooh. And that's that's finished? Finished? hey how that's did it come happening. out yes that's still happening <laughs> that's uh, no, i washed my hands don't worry that <laughs> was, was put off because of all of this because it's just you know little little stuff gets you know, i mean gets really just pushed way to the back but um you're but, working on that and the 666 documentary 666 is out and on my streaming site, liberatedx.com. That's liberatedx, L-I-B-E-R, wait, L-I-B-E-R. You're doing that. Liberated. Liberated. And so, huh? Oh, yeah, bathmetx.com. I've got, like, my own um, sort of, like, uh, it's, like, um, a social media um, platform thing in the, in the making. and um like people are signing up for it crazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> i was gonna ask you if facebook was the devil but i guess not you're, you're no i don't know it, my websites my websites are doing pretty well things are, getting, things are just going great um, uh, yeah so everybody needs to get off facebook and get on your social site get off right. facebook get on to bathroom x um come on over to liberal x.com i'm uploading new movies to my streaming site all the time um we've we've got the craziest uh, like underground and bootleg band concert videos mm -hmm. and all crazy like uh uncensored weird art and avant-garde films and great sammy davis jr amazing. christopher lee movie and six six is on it too yeah with dolomite uh the full the full uh stand-up routine and um and Duncan Trussell and Danzig and Hank Three and Forty Five Grave and Alkaline Trio and everyone. Oh, yes. There's only a hundred movies on there, right? Or hundred uh, yeah, concerts. Over, I think we got uh, we got uh, finally over a hundred titles and growing. And I've been, uh, man, I've got like thousands more to go up. And pe we're starting to take submissions for people. So it's just going to grow and grow, and it's crazy. It's and awesome. now that we're back in uh, quarantine, there's no excuse not to go check it out. Yeah, and no excuse for me to not keep bugging yeah. my employees to, to to rip movies and get them on my site. So yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 you, you cool. watched everything on Netflix. Now it's a real entertainment. Yeah. So now it's time to really do damage to your conscience and <laughs> turn yourself into a truly amoral freak of nature by going to Liberated X and signing up and becoming a member because the films that you watch on this site will permanently change you for the work. Well, change it for the better. <laughs> where does the time go? This has been so much fun. Mia? Uh, Mia. All right. Well, good to see you all. And Hannah, sort yeah. of. Mia, yeah. go, go to Mia fucking Mars on Instagram. Thank you. Please do. And you'll be doing comedy hopefully soon enough. Hey, I know, Mark. and hopefully we'll all be able to do this together in person soon. Die your yeah, the same on Zoom. I'm... Hail Satan. Hail Satan, Stanton. Thank you for Hail coming. Satan, Satan. BaphomX.com. LiberatedX.com. Uh, Hail Hannah Box 666 on Instagram. That's right. Hail Hannah Box 666. 
Yes, and Goth Camino on social media. Everybody, have a wonderfully have a wonderful Titanic week. week. Bye. Bye.